Okay. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, I am the founder of Easy Travel Platform. Uh, but it's only one of my roles today on the scene. My second role today will be a kind of you know, business consulting. And the second role will be more important because our platform is just instrumental for the whole project of we call Beyond Amsterdam. Well, um, yeah, it works. But anyway, just a couple of words about, uh, words about the platform itself so that we understand the basics. Easy Travel is an audio guide, audio guide on your mobile phone. So you walk through any city, you get to any museum, and you get the right story in the right place, switched on automatically by GPS in the right language. Well, and we are a platform like YouTube. So we have thousands of cities, museums, storytellers, sometimes it's Ministry of Tourism of Israel or Montenegro, who upload the stories to us. We have 30,000 of them, and we have half a million stories for people to listen. So we're just a bridge between content providers and people with their application. And we also promise to all these content providers that uh, in the future, the stories will be on every car, on every voice-based assistant, on every map, or in Booking.com, TripAdvisor, etc., etc. And we are totally free. That's the reason why we're very large, and that's our coverage. And if you look at the Amsterdam, you see these blue dots, Every dot represents like, you know, 10, 20, whatever story. So we cover Amsterdam completely and many other cities. You can check it yourself tonight if you walk around. Please do, you will like it. Well, now I switch to my another role, business consultant. It's not a role. I actually was business consultant in, for many years, and I launched and sold different businesses. I was in uh, cryptography, in car navigation, in high-speed rail construction, road safety, many other businesses, even in agriculture. By the way, in agriculture, once I got a great strategic advice from the cleaner in the barn. He told me, Alex, if you want to earn more, you should milk more and feed less. Well, so you see, I know how it works. <laughs> anyway, coming back to Amsterdam case. In Amsterdam, we have a lot of businesses, you know, airlines, hotels, restaurants, you name it. And Amsterdam processes a lot of people. And the question is, can we grow further? Answer is no, over tourism. Well, I can represent like that. So we have different type of businesses have different capacities in Amsterdam. And this is our bottleneck. This is the center of Amsterdam, just one square kilometer. People go there, and because the center of the city cannot process more people, the whole capacity of the city is at the level of this bottleneck. And that's, what we, that's our biggest issue. And if you look at the statistics of Easy Travel Platform, we have a lot of information, you know, from people who use our stories. These dots represent the usage of our stories. The red dot represents more usage. Uh, green dot represents less usage. You see that all people are listening to our stories in the center of Amsterdam, in the red light district. And actually, it's not because we have... Sorry? <laughs> actually, yes. <laughs> red light. And it's not because we don't have stories outside, because people just go there and they listen to only there. And, well, actually, I think one of the major reasons why they do it, they simply don't know that Holland, probably unlike many other countries, the most beauty of the Holland is outside of Amsterdam. It's not in the center of Amsterdam, but people simply don't know because nobody shows them. So it's quite natural. If you want to avoid this issue, we just need to push people away. And what's the best way to push people? Then to guide them away. And we represent guiding platform, so we knock to the Amsterdam office and say, guys, we can guide your tourists away from city center. Well, and we believe that if you do it, if you do this guidance, then, of course, city center capacity goes up, and then the system will lock itself at the level of hotels, for example. But anyway, point is that if Amsterdam resolves over tourism issue, all of you, all businesses, will benefit from it automatically without any efforts from your side. Okay, so we suggested our service, not only ours. We have many competitors. All of them can provide us guided tours to the city. And, well, it's not about technology, it's about the whole idea. But, you know, Amsterdam told us, no, it's not the right solution. And they had a point. Because if I wake up in the morning, I'm a tourist in Amsterdam, the knowledge that some great museum called Kroller Müller, somewhere in the deep, deep, in the middle of Norway, Netherlands, if they have great audio guides, it doesn't help. I don't know how to get there, which train to take, which bus to take, and what are cities around this crawler Müller, Arnhem, what can I do in Arnhem, what are restaurants there, I mean, I need the plan for the whole day. 
So Amsterdam office, they were absolutely right. They said, well, guys, we need to create first kind of routes. They called Amsterdam Roots Project to guide people for the whole day outside of Amsterdam. And they launched this, they launched this project uh, a year ago. Great project. They created 12 routes, published it on the website, so that people can go from Amsterdam somewhere, and they take a bus here, then they take a bicycle, and there you see they, on the water they, they take ferry, etc., etc. Everybody is happy. Well... After one year, when we look at the statistics and the results, well, it didn't went very well, so some things should be improved. What could be and should be improved here? We found three things. First one is that the Amsterdam Roots project is incomplete by itself without a guide. Let me explain it. If you recall old times when tour operators brought us with a bus somewhere, there were three components. The bus itself, transport, the knowledge where to go, and the human guide who told us stories. So in Amsterdam Route Project, they definitely have transport, buses, uh, trains, bicycles, etc. And they have the whole idea where to go. But this part is missing. You sit in the bus, what do you do? You just look through the window. You drive your bike, what do you do? Well, you don't get those stories which you, you promised implicitly when you went out of Amsterdam. So this part is missing and need to be restored. Otherwise, it's like, you know, Christmas tree without decoration. Doesn't look good. Well, second one is content creation capacity. Well, Amsterdam office created their own routes, but they created themselves. They cannot create content and routes for the whole Netherlands. They can't update it. It's too much resources. They don't have so many resources. So this is an issue. And the last issue is the lack of promotional power. Amsterdam website is very popular. But still, people go to other websites like holland.com, or they may probably start with booking.com, or whatever.com. There are a lot of resources people use, and Amsterdam office don't own them all. So even if they put it on their website, well, it's not the most powerful resource. Well, what to do with these three issues? We thought about it, and we think, we thought that it could be one solution to all three issues. You know, like this ring, one to rule them all. And this is a they needed a platform. We started to search for such a platform, and we found it. Guess where? We found a great platform at the Eiffel Travel Conference in London in May. It's called Road Travel. That's representative. And these guys, they provide exactly what Amsterdam needed. They provide a platform for routes, for this advises how to spend the whole day or the whole week in every particular country. We liked it very much, and we said, guys, let's marry together. So you represent this tree, we represent this decoration, and let's just do it together. Should I? Yeah, and as a result, we became their partner. We are very proud. You continue. Yeah. Hello, my name is Nikita, and I'm the founder of Road the Travel. Road the Travel uh, aggregates data and bookable services from more than 30 different providers, including flights, hotels, car rentals, uh, storytelling, routing, points of interest and other different data sources to let anyone create trips of any complexity to any destination for any travel ideas. And that platform is available as a white label solution. So how do we solve the problem of content creation, problem of content scalability? So this is the problem, the second problem which Alex already mentioned. Um, let's have a look at the original route once again from iamsterdam.com. We have recreated this route on our platform in a white label solution, this and other routes from iamsterdam.com. But now this platform can be implemented or integrated within iamsterdam.com or holland.com, booking.com, klm.com, whatever.com, which Alex also mentioned. Uh, thus, we are creating a, a new distribution potential uh, for these routes, potentially reaching more people. Also, the content itself can now be created not only by the tourism office of Amsterdam, but other ecosystem players, airlines, hotels, museums, tourism offices. So let's have a look at one of the trips which was created by the city of Deventer. It's a five-day trip, uh, road trip, including three hotels pre-selected by the tourism office of Deventer. If I, as a traveler, am not happy with the total price of this trip, which can be uh, booked as a package, I can type in my budget and the system will repackage the trip in seconds by selecting the best combination of hotels to be as close to my budget as possible while keeping the original route. So this is quite important because potentially it increases the chances of actually 
uh, booking this package uh, and therefore increasing revenues for the whole ecosystem. But that's not all. Users, travelers, can create their own routes. Alex mentioned this case with the city of Arnhem. So this is just an A to B route from Amsterdam to Arnhem. The system will recommend interesting places within a short distance from the original route, such as this Air Force Museum or the Museum of Modern Art, nice restaurants and cozy places to stay. So we are now solving the problem of content uh, creation in a scalable fashion by connecting different players of the ecosystem on the platform, including travelers themselves, and aggregating data from global suppliers. Now we're getting back to, to Alex. Thank you. Well, thanks. And uh, speaking about this lack of promotional power, uh, Nikita already suggested that this uh, road travel could be as a white label inserted to Amsterdam office website or any other op uh, website like home.com. But also, we understand that from this moment, we are talking not about technologies at all. We are talking about partnerships. And by the way, it's interesting that Amsterdam Marketing recently was renamed from from Amsterdam Marketing to Amsterdam Partners. So let's have a closer look at the partners. There are content partners and promotional partners. Content partners are regional tour offices. City of Deventer was an example. How it happened? City of Deventer used easy travel to create guided tours in City of Deventer for a couple of years already. They have great guided tours. I, I, did, I did myself. I liked it. But when we approached them a month ago, told them, guys, we can push people from Amsterdam to you. Do you like the idea? I said, yeah, what should we do it? He said, well, you take this platform road travel, you create a, a, the, ro the route from Amsterdam to Deventer and explain how it works, and then Amsterdam will be able to push people to you. Say, yeah, they, do, they did it in one day, literally, because they liked this idea. So in this case, we can use their power to create uh, these tools. Museums, uh, Kroller Müller Museum, it's a great museum, it was mentioned here, but they're in the middle of nowhere, literally. It's not possible to get there by public transport or whatever. It's, people cannot find it. When I spoke with them two years ago, with a marketing lady, uh, she told me, well, we are not interested in audio, just audio guide, just another audio guide is real. Who cares? When I approached her at the Museum Next conference last month, when we already started this discussion with Amsterdam, I told her, look, now I approach you not as a provider of storytelling technology. I can push people from Amsterdam to you. She immediately reacted and said, oh, oh, great idea. Let's talk to our, you know, different authorities in Arnhem and other cities. She organized for us meetings we have next week. So she really understood the power of promotion power of Amsterdam, and she is ready to create her content. So all these uh, stakeholders, partners around Amsterdam, museums, cities, publishing houses, people, etc., they are ready to create content for Amsterdam to be used. And, of course, crowdsourcing. And in this way, Amsterdam will do what they do the best to promote, but they can cherry pick the content which they like and push it and demonstrate it on their website using the platform of road travel. If I go to the promotional partners, actually, these partners are you. All the businesses sitting in front of me now, you are a natural partner of this kind of project. So if it's hotel, well, there are a lot of guided tours created in Amsterdam or outside of Amsterdam around your hotel. So you can easily promote these hotels. And we already have cases when the hotels just print out these leaflets and put it in every room as a TV. We have guided tours around, please use it. In this way, hotels help not only themselves to, to, you know, to entertain users, but they help the whole project as a whole. Uh, car rentals. We provide a reason to take a car, and road travel, again, can create the whole route, and even book a specific car for you using some typical agents. Airlines, well, it's a nice opportunity to present to your customers ideas that, well, now Amsterdam is not going to be any more, you know, overcrowded city. There are a lot of different routes, possibilities to see something outside. Please use it. Mobile operators, they sell, they sell prepaid SIM cards. Now they can sell prepaid SIM cards with free guided tours all around the Netherlands. And we have more than 1,000 tours in the Netherlands. It's definitely something to choose from. Cruise ships. Now we have a big issue in Amsterdam because cruise ships created, actually played their role in this over-tourism. So Amsterdam limited cruise ships amount, I think, from 200 to 200 per year. And it's a big issue. They simply can't get to Amsterdam. Amsterdam in, is even thinking about moving the port of Amsterdam 40 kilometers to the west 
out of the city. Well, it will help, but not the tourists. I mean, it's outside of Amsterdam. So cruise ships can sit with Amsterdam authorities at the table and say, guys, we will guarantee that every tourist on the boat of the ship will receive some application and will be able to choose where to go away, and we will push people away from city centers. It could be kind of discussion between them, which will help both Amsterdam businesses and cruise lines. And I just received a call from my colleague in Berlin, who is dealing with this cruise line association. He said, oh, yeah, Alex, next day I participate, he's participating in some cruise line conference. He's going to present the solution to cruise lines. Restaurants, yeah, they put this paper close on the table for you to see the map of the city. It could be a map with guided tours around. So all the businesses can get benefits from that. And even public transport, public buses can become hop-on, hop-off buses with guided tours created by local people for free and compete with these red buses. And we have cases with trains which already use our tours and print these leaflets and put everywhere at the train station so that uh, train users use uh, these guided tours uh, around cities. So point is that practically it's difficult to find the business, travel business, which cannot participate in the schema, getting benefits for the business and for the city as a whole. And also users. As Nikita just explained, users can participate on the content side. So when they play with this route, how he presented here, and change it a little bit, they create content which will be stored in the system and demonstrated to other users. And also users represent great promotional power because in the modern world, experiences are the new form of social currency. If you make your customer happy, your customer will make sure that in all social networks, he will retell the stories because good story wants to be retold. It will be done in a natural way. You will not have to advertise your businesses. They will do it for you. Well, so in a way, as I said, this project is not about technologies. Of course, we use technologies. My platform, his platform, it's all about partners. And look, we put together partners from business, from public authorities like Amsterdam office, from cultural institutions like museums, from cultural funds, because these cultural institutions will go to get European grants to create their content. And, of course, technological companies. Because it's quite typical for businesses to not to think outside of their own business. If I come to the conference of the hotels, I see that hotels talking about the issues. If I go to the museum conference, they talk about the issues. If, if I go to the conference of city authorities, they all work in their closed circles. We suggest to open the circles and to cooperate through different industries. In this case, we can optimize not particular business, we can optimize the whole value chain and find a lot of opportunities. Well, the whole case of Amsterdam definitely could be scaled up to the whole Holland, because uh, Holland.com probably will participate here, and beyond Holland to the whole Europe and the world easily. So it's really scalable because it's just platform-based. And the more content is in the system, the more people use it. It could be scaled not only, only geographically, which, and by the way, it already happens. For example, if you look at the, this map of Moscow, in the scale of 300 kilometers, this big region, and unlike Amsterdam, you see that red dots here go far beyond Moscow because it already works this way. This is our heat map where people actually use our stories. Red lines represent uh, car routes, so people use us in the cars. But these green lines, they represent the routes for the trains. So we are not very much used in the trains, but used already. So we see that regional cities, which are 200 kilometers away from Moscow, they use all the storytelling power to get people from Moscow to them. Actually, it's done at the second layer. We had a case of a small village which is taking tourists already from the regional center to themselves, using, again, the same platform. So it's two layers of this expansion of tourists beyond you know, the center. And also, it could be expanded not only to over-tourist areas, but to under-tourism, because over-tourism, when you resolve over-tourism, you actually help under-tourist areas. A good example is Marche region in Italy. We have a tour operator, test tour, uh, and they bring tourists, you know, to the seaside hotels, and they usually ask by small villages around, guys, could you please bring your tourists with buses? Well, they can bring to the large villages, but they can do it to the small villages. And then they had the idea that they suggested small villages to create guided tours in the village and towards the village. And they said, we will send you buses without human guide. It will be cheaper. Also, if you create these tours in different languages, we will send you a small bus with people of different nationalities. It's even more easier. 
In this case, they have much further reach than just, you know, to the most famous cities. So this is a case of reversed over-tourism, which is under-tourism. And there are a lot of depressed regions in Europe who would like to get tourists. Well, uh, it could be extended towards coming technologies. We are going to have cars without steering wheels soon. What are you going to do in a car without steering wheel? You're going to listen stories. Well, you listen radio, but this is location-based radio. You're going to listen it as long as local people and museums create the stories for you. So all the job we are doing now with Amsterdam office and many other regional authorities, all this content will be automatically reused in the new cars. And again, it's not theory. If you look at this great picture at the Porsche meeting, this is Nikita or Ford. We were there also together with him. So car manufacturers are already implementing this stuff. Not only car manufacturers, but also voice-based assistants. The great systems like Google Assistant or Apple Siri, we are talking to these guys, we already implemented in one of the voice-based assistants, and they get all the stories automatically. So it's a very large ecosystem of businesses, also including these big guys who participate in the whole process. Well, a couple of words about this stuff. This airline engine. When you buy on AliExpress a USB cable for one euro, it's not because of the invention of the engine, because of the invention of the simple stuff called container. Technologically, container is just a box. But from an organizational point of view, it was a huge innovation in the transport industry, which changed complete transportation around the world. My point is that sometimes innovation is not in technology, it's in the way how people cooperate together. And the whole project which I presented to you today, it's not about technology, it's about your ability to innovate, but not through technology, to innovate through cooperation with each other, cooperation between businesses and public authorities and culture institutions, etc. So that's my message. Don't reinvent the wheel. I mean, the, don't make all technologies yourself. Find them outside, because most of technologies are for free. We are free, road travel are totally free. We don't charge at all. But what's important, if you cooperate together, you can get much more. That's more or less the idea. So these are two guys who present you. Oh, present. Uh, if you install this easy travel application, you really can walk tonight around Amsterdam enjoying great tours created by local people. You can, I mean, it works. That's it. Thanks, Alex, and thanks, Nikita. The um, question I asked that question, just a quick one from me. Uh, what's your business model? Because it looks lovely, but uh, we all have to make money from our We don't make businesses. money, we are just nice people. That's my tip I, I know you're nice people, yes. <laughs> well, okay, if you look at the whole value chain, uh, we are like YouTube, we are database, uh, and people upload their stuff, and people use our stuff uh, using our tools. As I mentioned, quite soon we are going to be in every car and in every voice-based assistant. These guys are going to pay us. We'll be totally free always for those who create content. We'll be free for users. But BMW car, they will get value when they tell stories. They will pay for every story they play, and they're quite okay with it. And your stories are audio, and they're mostly, multi -language? Mostly audio, and some of them could be even video, definitely photograph, text. But audio is important because if you compare us with YouTube, YouTube belongs to the hardware, computer hardware. You sit at the table, you look at the screen. So it's video. And if you move from computer to mobile telephone, it's not about video, it's about audio, because your eyes are busy. You are driving, you are walking, you are in the museum looking at something, so audio is new augmented reality. And also, on YouTube you have URL, here you have your position, GPS position. So it's location-based audio is a new YouTube for the new hardware. So it's just next generation. So it's okay. mostly audio, location-based. Fine. And a question from Slido there. Why are you both two separate companies? Uh, are you both <laughs> engaged on just this project, or are you actually well, doing we, we, other we, we just as met, well? We just met at your conference in May. In May, yeah. The fact that we are both dot travel is just coincidence, yes. really. So in November last year, when I found that Amsterdam needs this kind of platform, I started to search for such platforms. We just found them, became partners, nothing else. We are two separate businesses. Uh, uh, are you partners, or, or Alex, are you just a supplier of content to uh, Nikita? We are, we are partners, and Nikita gets information from many systems, like you know, Booking.com, etc. I'm just one of suppliers of content here. In this, but when we talk to Ford Company, we talk together as partners. 
And presumably, Nikita, when you're recommending on your road trips um, hotels and pricing, you're taking a commission on those bookings, yes? Yeah, absolutely. So yes. our business model is, is simple. Yeah, we cool. receive affiliate commissions if we're talking about B2C. If we do weight label solutions, then... They're that's, not so that's nice that's as we are. It's always, it's always in the revenue share space somehow. Fine. Any, any questions, anybody? No, in that case... Well, uh, enjoy storytelling. Yeah, that's and, fantastic. And... Uh, Alex and Nikita, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you for your attention.